So today is here, the one that I have certainly been waiting for. It's a 2018 BMW M5. So again, this one's through Thrifty and my uh, good friend Jonathan. A little bit of backstory about the car. So this is not part of Thrifty's fleet. This is the only M5 that Thrifty have in the country. It's actually the chairman's car uh, of Thrifty and he is away on holiday and Jonathan uh, very kindly asked him if I could borrow it for the 24 hours and he said yes. So here we are, so um, you'll see from the pictures that I'll add into the video, this this is a really stunning blue one, I absolutely love this colour with black wheels. Uh, it's done 5,000 miles, I've done two and 80 of those uh, so far. Um, I, I've driven, this is my third M5 now. The first one was on a BMW uh, M kind of taster day really where they had an event, had loads of cars and I probably drove it for 10 to 15 minutes. So that was my first experience. The second one was one that I hired from Jonathan again um, and this is the next iteration on so a little bit about the car, so it's a 4.4 litre twin turbo uh, V8, uh, very similar engine and power output about 600 bhp from the last one. Um, I'm just going to insert a uh, plug through here, um, it helps us to edit his eyes, uh, also biography on all the people who have lucky us with Brexit, here's what we have in 10 seconds, so I'm going to pay homage to that on the back of the back. May or may not be able to see. I've got my M5 shirt on today for the occasion, so uh, please dislike the video if you think that's far too cringy. Um, so yeah, it's 600 600 brake horsepower. Um, so what, what's the, what's the difference? What's the update? So it's a new it's the new cabin. Uh, it's the new M5 uh, series layout. What's what's different? There? So the gear stick above the standard 5 series is uh, got the M badge on it you'll see a number of little M badges across on the steering wheel uh, there's one on the gear stick the, the, the way the gear stick is sculptured in the new M5 I love I think it's I think it's stunning in terms of other other differences over a standard 5 series it is a digital digital dash um, the two M buttons which we'll come on to um, in a second which um, select different driving modes, but I think they're, they're, they're machined out of metal and they're beautiful. I, I was expecting them to feel a little bit cheaper and a bit more plastic, but they're, they're, they're lovely actually, they're really nice. Uh, the new shape steering wheel, I, I'm a bit, I, I love a good steering wheel, it's not my favourite. Um, my favourite is the standard 3 series, actually, I love this thing. Uh, a really chunky hand, a couple of other um, things over the the standard 5 series M stitching inside the steering wheel so the blue and the red which is your glass. I go nuts about these seat belts. I know I've said this before but the, 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 the triple coloured stitched into the seat belt I just I love it but I don't know why I love it so much but I really really think it's awesome. Um, there's also a very tiny it's probably about two and a half centimetres um, M stitched on the side of the, the, foot, the, the floor mass is so tiny you would almost not notice it. Um, so that in terms of the cabin, or oh, the other thing about the cabin is the seats. Um, these big, heavy, um, luxurious seats and again the M5 badge is in the, the headrest which I think looks pretty awesome along with um, the M5 badges and the foot plates. So that's kind of a little bit from the inside, the outside is where it's the, the most different, and that's the four-wheel drive system, and then, and then I'll talk about kind of where, where that things in for me. So I said I've been waiting for this one for ages, I've watched all the reviews online, I've read every single article in Evo and all of those things, just wanting to, you know, and, and that age-old battle between this and the E63S. So interestingly, before I got in the car, I watched uh, Matt's video um, from Car Wow, uh, launch controlling this, 
can't launch it. I've tried, and I'm, I'm not doing it right. So that is user error. But he launched it with a V-Logic box, and he launched it 3.1. Well, the clock is 3.4, and the E63S is 3.2. So with the increased horsepower and torque of the E63S, zero to 62, this this will do it by a fraction. But as a fanboy of M5, I was I was uh, very very pleased. Yip, 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 yip. Um, about that footnote on our strategy watching. Um, so the four wheel drive is the big difference. These reviews are me. I'm deputy principal at a, a school. I'm not a, a driving expert. I've, been, I've driven the M3. The M760 Li and the M6 uh, Grand Coup Competition Pack, but these are the ones that I review. We also drove the Volkswagen Golf GTI, and I've driven lots of stuff on track days, but these are real world reviews. So I'm going to tell you just my, my impressions now that you know a little bit about the interior, a little bit about the performance, and a little bit about the exterior. What I really can get my head around in terms of the differences. The M3, the M6, the M760 Li is the grip. I mean, you, you can drive this as badly as you want, and, and it, it doesn't matter either. You can brake in the wrong place, you can accelerate in the wrong place, you can you can turn in aggressively. It's just it, 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 it's so. My worry would be is that you would you would be so about how planted it is that you would just push harder and harder and harder and harder until your talent runs out in, in the end of the ditch. You know, it is I, I still can't get my head around it and I think part of that is is the four wheel drive system absolutely so right. The other part about it is is that I think these Michelin Sport 4S are in a different league. I mean what a, a, a little a neat little feature is I took my two boys out uh, last night in it, and there is a temperature sensor in the tyres. So the front tyres were up to 42, and the rear tyres were up to 40, which I thought was interesting and probably uh, uh, indicative of the, the braking that was going on. Um, yeah, and I just think once they're up to temperature, they are in a different league. So, so the grip is one, and like I say, I am not. You know, I was not a very good driver by any stretch of the imagination, but it just, you throw it around like nothing else I've ever driven, and you just think, God, what have you got to do to this car to unsettle it? I've got the traction control on once, now it's really dry and really warm, so the conditions are good. I drove the M3, and when we drove the M6, it was wet, and it was really tricky, and I thought the M3 in particular was really skittish. The rain is due to set in today, so... Um, that might be interesting actually to see what it's like a little bit later on. Um, but the grip number one is is in a different league as far as I'm concerned from a very amateur point of view. So the second thing is the speed, and obviously it's obvious it's got 600 brake horsepower, it's got you know a twin turbo 4.4 litre V8 engine, you know, with four wheel drive. Yeah, of course it's Interesting that when you get into tenths of a second, you think, well, you, 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 you know, you're talking about thinking things in terms of acceleration. For me, I, I think there is a definite step on from the other M cars that I've driven on the road. If, to an extent, that, that there is a genuine throwback when you when you come down the cog, there's, there's no doubt about that. Um, and if a road's driving, if you don't know the road, you can't you can't think quick enough for it. It's it's a thousand light years ahead of you. Just give it a little bit more squeeze up the hill. I don't know if that will come out noise-wise on the GoPro, but that's you know that's pretty pretty sharpish, and it just in any gear, in absolutely any gear, it's just gone. It is just 
John is phenomenal. Um, so, yeah, I definitely can feel that there is a step on in acceleration from the other end cars, no doubt about it. So that acceleration with that grip, I, I just, it would be insane to take this on the track because I would love to know where it sits in relation to sports cars in terms of what, you know, would it keep pace with a Cayman S, you know, in terms of weight and acceleration, you know, is it more, I don't know, I genuinely think even for the weight of this thing, it, it would embarrass a number of top sports cars, I, I genuinely think that. In terms of the settings, the, the M1 and 2, so our M1 is, is soft for me, so I've got it in uh, efficient, comfort suspension, comfort comfort gear changes, comfort uh, steering. M2, I've got it in sport steering. I think sport plus is too heavy in that. For me, it's very similar to the other M cars. I don't think there's much change there. Um, as with lots of people, I keep it in comfort on the, on the suspension settings on the road because the the surfaces here in sport, I, I think it would spit you out. But I think that would be the one place that it, it, it would find you wanting is that it is just so hard so i it's a four plus engine so it's a maximum attack engine it's in d3 gear shift so you can move manually but if you you know if you stop it will, it will kick you back into auto which you'll find like there is also s3 uh, which i believe is kind of uh, manual um so yeah for me um m2 when you're on it it steps up the noise changes you can hear the engine um, it, you know, it is, like I say, it is absolutely on point. So, okay, so let's, let's talk about a couple of bits, the initial impressions of picking up and driving it for almost very long. I have fitted it, my thighs are too wide, and that might be a lifestyle issue for me, but the side bolsters on the bottom portion of the chair uh, are too high and too tight, and it's it ordering that time and it's interesting because the Ford Focus RS is the same the Golf similar not not as bad um, so yeah I, I'm not very comfy in it and for me it's just always past these points um, for me it would almost be prohibitive by the way struggle to do long distance and that like I say is absolutely heartbreaking. Um, there is a bit of wind noise up in this window here and, and I've checked it and it, it, the button is up but there's definite um, audible wind noise up. Like, like you would hear in cheaper cars where the window is doesn't the seal's not quite right. Now that might be that might be a particular issue with this car because I would be gobsmacked um, if it was standard thing. Um, the, other, the, the, the other point that's just, and, and again this is probably more about me, but it gives you an indication of an 8-speed gearbox, is that when you're on it, it, it's struggling to make its mind up all the time between 3rd and 4th. So it and then it's 4th and then it thinks, mm, I'm not well, it got enough to be in fourth, so I drop it down into third. So it's ever so jumpy um, between third and fourth gear when you're on it. Now, the way to eliminate that, of course, is to keep it in manual. But like I said, one of the issues for me is that I, I'm not good enough, my brain's not quick enough for road driving to also comprehend eight cogs. So in a five speed car, in a six speed car, I kind of know where I am in terms of the gears, whereas with eight, I'm not sure if I'm clicking once, clicking twice to go to go up and down. And I think, and I think, although there are advantages in terms of the acceleration and the fuel and all that sort of thing, having eight gears, it's not so sure, uh, you know, at full chat, in that kind of 50-70 bracket for where it wants to sit in terms of third and fourth. Um, so I will often either click it out of third or bring it 
bring it down into fourth. I have to say the, the kick down response is, is excellent. Um, on daily driving, what I would probably do is I would drive it in M1 and keep the engine in sport because when you just want that little extra zip away from the roundabout, it's just a tiny, tiniest flat, flat point at the top of the accelerator and I know that that is very much designed on purpose but for me, just to, just to dip across, I'd probably keep it small just to sharpen that up a little bit. Um, this one's got the, the, sorry I forgot to mention, right back at the start of the this one's also got the black wheels, which I think look pretty smart with this with this blue. Um, so yeah, like I say, these are my initial impressions. Like I say, I'm not, you know, I, I'm a, a teacher. I'm not any enthusiast. Cars. I'm just the ultimate enthusiast. And, and to have an opportunity to drive the only M5 in Thrifty's fleet, you know, a four-month-old car, five thousand miles on it. I mean, what, what a dream! What an absolute dream! So. I hope, that, I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you, as ever, for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And let's see what the next car will be to come. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.